In today's video, we are going to demonstrate the reverse creaming method of mixing. And in many of the recipes in our recipe section, we use this method. And the main difference is that you're mixing all of your dry ingredients at once, and then you're adding the wet ingredients to that. And the result is a cake that's a bit more tender and a bit more dense. It has more of a melt in your mouth quality. And there's many people who find that after getting used to this method, find that it moves a little bit more quickly than the conventional method of mixing. So you'll notice some more of our recipes have the conventional method. I like both of them, but because we use this one so often, I wanted to have a video demonstration. One other thing I wanted to mention is that this is also called the high ratio method of mixing. And what that means is that it has more sugar than flour by weight, or even an equal amount of sugar and flour, but you never wanna try this method of mixing with a recipe that calls for less sugar than flour. Okay, so in just a second, we're gonna get started. The oven has preheated to 350 degrees. Make sure that you allow a good 20 minutes for the oven to reach that temperature. Uh, the butter of, for the recipe we've sliced up, and you can see it's on this plate right here, ready to go. In my mixing bowl, I have my dry ingredients, and so that's the flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt. You wanna make sure that you mix those, and I just like to use a whisk. You could use the paddle attachment or a beater, but the whisk I find gets it more incorporated. So give it a good whisk for 30 seconds, and I've already done this. Okay, so we'll set that to the side. And then our liquid ingredients, which is the eggs, the milk, the sour cream, and the flavorings are in this uh, mixing bowl right here, or this little measuring cup. And you just wanna make sure that everything is combined before you get started. We have already prepared two eight inch pans. So we've greased and floured two of these pans so that they're ready to go once our batter is ready. And the other thing I wanted to mention is our digital scale. Um, so you don't have to have a digital scale for this, but it's ideal because you're gonna get the most accurate measurement, especially when it comes to flour or your dry ingredients. Uh, so the thing to keep in mind with your digital scale is that when you're measuring your flour into your bowl, before you start that process, go ahead and place your bowl on top of the scale and zero out that weight of the bowl so that you won't throw off your measurements and then continue with filling the bowl with your flour. We have another video on the conventional method of mixing if you'd like to take a look at that. And in that video, we are also making the same exact recipe. We're just doing, adding the ingredients in a different order. The other thing I wanted to mention is for this recipe, if you're not a fan of almonds, you can just leave that out and it's still a very good vanilla cake recipe. So in just a second, I'm gonna come around so that you can get a closer look at the mixing process. Okay, so right here is our mixing bowl with our dry ingredients and we're getting ready to add butter to it. And the most important part of this is you want to make sure that the butter is completely coating that flour mixture, but you don't wanna let it mix too long. You wanna stop it while it's still in a very crumbly stage. And this butter, it is soft enough that when I press, it leaves a little impression, but it still feels cold. Okay, so we'll mix it. I'm gonna put it on low. I'm gonna add several clumps of butter at a time. Three. Okay, so we'll turn it up to medium and just keep an eye on it. So I've just stopped my mixer so I can check on it. Um, that was less than a minute. I was actually just stopping to see if it had reached that crumbly stage and it has. Everything is well coated, but it's still very crumbly like that. And that's what you want. Okay, I'm gonna go to a final turn or two just to make sure that 
everything is incorporated, still crumbly, but we want our flour to be coated with this butter. Okay, so I think this looks good. We are now going to move on to adding the liquid to this flour and butter mixture. Okay, so we have our liquid here and I'm gonna pour in half of our liquid now. About half. That looks like half. Okay, now we're gonna mix it on medium speed for one and a half minutes. And this is going to give us a really fluffy batter. Okay, so we're mixing away. You can see that the, it's getting more and more fluffy. The volume is increasing, and so that's a good thing. Uh, we got about 20 seconds left to go, and we'll meet right back. Okay, so we've just finished one and a half minutes of mixing, and you can see the batter is nice and fluffy already. I'm going to give a quick scrape down of the sides. So of the remaining liquid mixture, we're going to add it in two different pourings. So I'm going to go ahead and pour half of this remaining liquid in right now. We're going to mix it for 20 seconds. So just count to 20. Okay, so we've reached our 20 second mark. One more, whoops, one more little scrape down of the sides and down to the bottom. Okay, let's add the remaining liquid now. Okay, so I've just scraped down the sides of my bowl and have just added the last of our liquid mixture. So that second pouring that we just mentioned, I'm gonna turn it on for another 20 seconds and we should be about ready. Okay, so that's been our last 20 second round of mixing. And the batter is nice and fluffy. I wanna scrape all of this batter off so we don't waste any of it. Okay, I just wanted to give it one last turn and to really give you a good view inside of this bowl. Uh, so we are now ready to turn this into the pan. We're dividing the batter over these two pans. Uh, this makes about seven cups of batter. So I'm just using a measuring cup to help me scoop out the batter and we'll just alternate between the two pans. Okay, so we'll meet back in just a second. Okay, so I'm just smoothing our batter so that it's nice and even and our cakes are ready to be baked now. Uh, one thing to mention, Usually I do not do this step, but if you want to be completely exact on the amount of batter in each pan, you can weigh with your digital scale, just weigh each pan and compare just to make sure that you don't have more batter in one than another. Also, I like to give it a whack or two on top of the counter, and that's going to bring any air bubbles to the top. So we'll do that for both. And now they're ready to be baked. Okay, so our cakes are finished. They baked in the oven for about 35 minutes, cooled in the pans for about 10 minutes, and then we flipped them onto our foil-lined cake boards. Uh, if you want to freeze your cakes, we often do that. We feel like it traps even more moisture into the cake, so you would just wrap them with plastic wrap and then with foil and freeze them for a few hours or until you need them up to a few months. So I hope something in this video was helpful for you. I really like this reverse creaming method. And so if you haven't tried it, I hope you'll give it a try. I think the cakes are really, really good. They smell really good too. So hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.